Good afternoon and welcome to today's ceremony. My name is Councillor Danny Thorpe and I'm the leader of the Royal Borough of Greenwich. It began for me on Sunday the 8th of March at 9.39. An email arrived to tell me that our first positive COVID case had been confirmed in the hospital that stands behind you. Like many of you, I'd been watching the news about this new virus that had emerged thousands and thousands of miles away. And suddenly, it was here, in our borough and in our home. How had it got here? Who had it? Who else was exposed? What did it all mean? Questions that kept spinning in my mind throughout the night. The next few days blurred into one. We were busy organising, planning, communicating, taking decisions. The only modelling that existed suggested that we'd need 4,000 ventilators for this part of London. We had 17. Long, long days, as we worried, processed, and feared what was to come. I've been the leader of this great borough for two years, and have experienced a fair number of difficult events and conversations in that time. Death, fire, terrorism, but even in those early days, this felt darker, heavier, more terrifying than anything I'd ever known. Just a few days later, I remember sitting in my office as the World Health Organization declared that COVID-19 was now officially a pandemic, spreading freely across the world. Meetings became more frenetic, people became more panicked, the scale of the virus became clearer. I remember walking through Power Street in Woolwich, looking at the growing, snaking lines outside our shops, the fear-filled faces of our residents, their bags soon packed with whatever was left on the shelves. I remember leaving the town hall after a 15-hour day and reaching Sainsbury's to find empty supermarket shelves, row after row, of unfilled space where food had always been plentiful. And I remember seeing the angry, tired faces of shoppers the next morning, forcing their way through the doors to grab whatever was left. Shop workers terrified as the angry mob surged through the store like a raging sea, moving too loudly and too quickly to hear the desperate voices of those swept up in the storm those who would end up with nothing. And then the volume of the world turned down. The skies no longer filled with the planes roaring engines, our roads no longer rammed with overflowing buses. Lockdown, silence, emptiness. Leading our borough is a privilege I can never adequately describe. But in those dark days and moments, it was truly terrifying. But soon, in amongst that darkness and the heaviness, lights began to emerge. And as those days became longer and the challenges grew more complex, those lights have only grown bigger and shone more brightly. Those lights, all of you, the stars that have guided us here in Greenwich through this pandemic today. The first challenge that we faced was mobilising our volunteers, helpers of all shapes and sizes, who were desperate to see what they could do for their community. Some were furloughed, some were fearful, but all were fearless in their determination to help. Volunteers like Chris Mannion, who is here with us today. Chris and hundreds more joined our community hub. Others joined the Greenwich Mutual Aid Group established by an incredible woman called Kathy Wang, who had never volunteered for anything in her life. Since the 27th of March, Chris, Kathy, and our Greenwich Army of Helpers have given Greenwich over 52,000 hours of volunteering time, almost six years of continuous service in less than 160 days. 
can I ask you please to join me in showing your appreciation for Chris, for Cathy, and all of our extraordinary volunteers. An immediate challenge that we faced was finding new ways of, work, of, new ways of working to help those people in need. And whilst we're all Zoomers now, we weren't back then. And you can't get virtual prescriptions or ask a robot to deliver your shopping. Our community hub was set up almost overnight. A network of organisations and partners with Charlton Athletic Community Trust at the core. The Trust do truly inspirational work across Greenwich, leading our short breaks programme for disabled children and a lot of our public health work. In a matter of days, they changed their entire operating model and were out on the front line from day one. Football coaches became personal shoppers, swapping the training ground for the co-op. The community pharmacy people had collapsed, leaving hundreds of our residents without medication. Jason, DJ and the team stepped up to every single challenge that we asked and delivered, and nothing was ever too much trouble. Since the 27th of March, they've taken over 100,000 calls from residents in Greenwich asking for help. One of those calls was from Emma. Emma was in Australia, and her mum was stuck here. Not only was her mum shielding, she had cancer and had run out of chemotherapy pills. Within 12 hours of calling from down under, the Trust had got Emma here to the hospital for the blood test she needed to get her medication. A literal lifeline for Emma's mum and many more throughout the whole of this period. Can I ask you all now please to show your appreciation for everyone who's worked so tirelessly for us in our community hub. It's sometimes difficult to remember what life was like before. But when we look back, we know that food poverty was on the rise. In 2010, there were 29 food banks operating in this country. After a decade of Tory-led austerity and savage cuts to our public services, you won't be surprised to, that today there are more than 2,000. But even with poverty rising so sharply, the supply or provision of food had simply not been an issue for many people before COVID. As panic and fear spread from the middle of March, shops were stripped bare of almost everything. And in those early days, a tin of tomatoes was probably more valuable than a bar of gold. Getting food to people was probably the biggest challenge that we faced. With thousands of people shielded and thousands more unable to leave the house, Meeting the most basic of human needs was essential. The Greenwich Cooperative Development Agency has been in the business of supporting our communities to be healthy and sustainable since 1982, and never have they been more valued or more appreciated than now. Claire, Jane, Mel, Jazz, Gary, the whole GCDA team used all of their local networks and knowledge to start feeding the people who needed it cooking thousands and thousands of meals for our older residents, our children who just left care. Ensuring local businesses supported our effort and stayed in business as a result. Distributing thousands and thousands of food boxes across our borough. It has been the most extraordinary effort. If you ever get the chance to take a visit to the Woolwich Com Common Community Centre, which is just over the road, I urge you to go. It's a place that warms the soul, a place that shows the power of people and what can be achieved when people work together. Can I ask you please to show your appreciation to the incredible team here at GCDA for everything they've done for our most vulnerable residents during this time. I've learnt that during these past few months, there will always be more people to thank and never enough time to do so. The incredible team of officers that I'm lucky to have at the Council 
have risen to this challenge in ways that I could not have hoped for, the very best of public service. Last night, I was honoured to share this stage with Angela Heller, who's the chief nurse here at the Lewisham and Greenwich NHS Trust. Angela has led the nursing team here in Woolwich through what must surely be the challenge of their career. And while the clapping may have stopped, we must ensure the increased respect, admiration and support we have seen for our NHS continues to grow. Nye Bevan said that the NHS will last as long as there are folks left with the faith to fight for it. And I truly hope that after everything we have seen and been through as a country, that faith is bigger and stronger than before. We owe so many people an immeasurable debt of gratitude for what they have done for us. This pandemic has changed the world we live in for good. The things that we value and the things that we don't have never appeared so clear. I'm incredibly proud that we're here today at the first outdoor arts festival that this country has had. Real people at a cultural event. Not a Zoom event in sight or anyone shouting down the phone that you're on mute. The fight is on to rebuild and recover and we must never forget that culture in all of its forms is an essential part of our lives. A vehicle that brings us all together, that allows us to reflect, to enjoy each other, and to celebrate the togetherness that has got us here today, 158 days since lockdown began. So today, I stand here in awe of the phenomenal individuals and organizations that sit before me, that we're so blessed to have here in Greenwich. We mourn here, in memoriam, for everything and everyone that we have lost. And we surely stand here together in the hope that better days lie ahead of us.